This is the News Leader, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Tonight, digging out from one of the worst blizzards in the tri-state's history, and it will take days until things are back to normal. Plus, firefighters in Queens tonight battling a five-alarm blaze in the worst of conditions. Good evening, everyone. I'm Diana Williams. And I'm Bill Ritter. Tonight, a special one-hour edition of Eyewitness News, and that's because the tri-state is digging out tonight from one huge blizzard, the fourth largest here ever, a record setter that dumped more than two feet of snow in some areas and wiped out the snow clearing budgets for New Jersey, Connecticut, and New York City. Plow operators are working round the clock to clear streets and roadways in time for the morning commute, a $20 million operation, but there will be major service delays and operations. And at the bottom of your screen, you're going to see complete listings of those throughout this hour. At the airports, thousands of passengers are stranded tonight, virtually no flights taking off or landing until morning at least. And the snow is getting blamed tonight for some deadly accidents, including an awning collapse at a technical school in Edison, New Jersey. That accident killed a student. For the latest, let's go to Sam. He's at the wall with the numbers and the forecast. Sam? And Bill, they're just more spectacular the more you actually look into them. Prior to this storm, we'd only had 22 inches of snow for the entire winter season. We doubled that one in this day as well. The winner is Monroe in Orange County, New York, with 30 inches of snow. But in general, the range was 18 to 26 inches across the area that's shown in white now. As the snow pulls away, we're left to 12 to 18 inches, including the eastern end of Long Island and this edge right on the Jersey shoreline and on up the Hudson Valley. These snowfall totals are impressive. It is the record setter. Everyone's telling you that. It is, and now you'll watch all of this continue to push on into northern New England. What's behind it? There will be some flurries for first thing in the morning. Some of this is actually going to hold together in this cold air as it swings through. Now, temperatures will be a bit milder. Right now, we're 24 degrees. By 7 o'clock in the morning, we'll actually be 26 degrees. So that does give you the opportunity to pick up a degree or two overnight tonight. Those peak wind gusts, though, have a tendency to make things feel even colder. We're 10 miles per hour in the Hudson Valley, 23 in Hartford, 25 toward the island, 15, 17 miles per hour. First thing you notice here, much less wind now than right in the peak of this storm with the 40 and 50 mile per hour wind gusts. And you're actually right. The uh, wind chills are not quite as bitter either. We're looking at zero, seven degrees in northern lines, but still have some below zero wind chills. Wind chill numbers will probably hover right around the zero mark overnight tonight in the first part of the morning. Uh, it's not that these things are going to be as brutal because the winds fall back and the temperatures actually kind of hold where they are in most locations. Snow, not adding more to the collection, but the blowing snow will still be a problem, even with a 10 or 12 mile per hour wind. This snow is very light, very fine, powdery. If you've been out there, it is going to get picked up and blown around. Now, what follows this storm? We'll have it all in the forecast uh, all the way through the week, and it is some milder air. I think you'll like it. We come back in just a minute. Bill and Diana. Thank you, Sam. Sam, as you know, it's the worst blizzard in seven years, and now comes the difficult task of clearing the streets and getting the city back on track again for the morning commute. Mayor Bloomberg says it could take several days and many millions of dollars. We begin tonight with Dave Evans, who is live from Manhattan Valley. Dave? Oh, Dinah, let me give you an example of what it's like here on Broadway. The city, I think all things considered, has done a pretty good job. It is pretty clear. You can see some nice gray asphalt here on Broadway on the Upper West Side. But take a look at one of the side streets. This is 109th Street here right behind me. A much, much different story. The plows have gone through, but still a lot of work to be done here on the Upper West Side. So the best advice tomorrow if you are in the city is don't drive. Take a subway. With almost 3,000 sanitation workers plowing tonight, New York City and its 6,000 miles of road are struggling to at least become passable for Tuesday morning rush hour. We just started, but so far, you know, it seems all right. Look like we can get ahead of this stuff. And even with this being a holiday and public schools closed for the week, it could be a long wait till the city is back to normal. I think Wednesday we'll start to see our way cleared out of this. By Thursday, you know, as the weather gets warmer, the stuff will start to melt. Um, the roads will be clear and, you know, things will get back a little bit to normal. And so the advice from city officials, including the mayor, avoid driving time, if at all possible. Uh, but the bottom line is some of these streets just we're not going to get to them. And if everybody could just exhibit some patience and a little bit of humor. New Yorkers adopted the mayor's message today by jogging through the storm or skiing, as investment banker Matt Pashinsky did this morning on his two and a half mile trek to work. Oh, it's been great. I took a little tour through Central Park and uh, it's real pretty and got a few miles in, got some exercise in. Tonight, the city firefighters got their own kind of exercise by digging out buried 
fire hydrants. So between people cleaning the, the sidewalk and the plows, they've kind of buried the fire hydrants. So we're out now digging them out so that if we need to use them, we'll know where they are. The city's budget is $20 million annually for snow removal. That's all been spent and the tab keeps rising much to the dismay of the guy in charge of all this snow removal. He came out of retirement last year to work for Mayor Bloomberg. I should have stayed in California. It didn't snow out there. <laughs> and the mayor has one other favor to ask you. If you can, please shovel your sidewalks tomorrow. Today, a lot of people had to simply walk in the streets because the sidewalks were not clear today. It's going to be rough going all day tomorrow in the city. For more on how to get around in the city tomorrow, over on the east side, Art McFarland. Art? Dave, that message that the city officials want you to have about not driving your personal cars into the city tomorrow is probably the most important message they can give. Just take a look here. Down 77th Street on the east side, so many cars buried under the snow on the street, so you wouldn't be able to find a parking space anyway. And there are reasons why you're being advised to use mass transit. Carolyn and Mark Richardson are being paid by their Chelsea neighbor to dig out his car. So in the morning when he needs to go to work, we're going to, so we can come out and just pull out easy, more easy because the plow comes through and just uh, kind of co covers the car in snow. He can't, he can't get out. But this kind of digging out is exactly what the city does not want as pointed out by Department of Transportation Commissioner Iris Weinshaw. We don't need cars moving now. Uh, what we need is we need clear roads so that sanitation can get their job done. Also, tomorrow will be a time to pay attention to those snow emergency signs on major streets. What it means is that you really shouldn't park on those snow emergency streets. Even if there are meters there, you should not park because it's a snow emergency street, and that means that we need to be able to clear it as quickly as possible. Cars are expected to have snow tires on the emergency streets, while trucks and other oversized vehicles are required to have chains. As for the sidewalks, the cleanup is underway in parts of Manhattan. After I do this, I got to put the salt down, you know, melt all this down, okay. make it safe for everybody. In fact, building owners, residents, and commercial tenants are required to clear the sidewalks in front of their buildings, creating a path for pedestrian traffic. Sanitation department rules also say this should be done four hours after the snowfall ends or by 11 a.m. the next day if it ends overnight. Failure to clean the sidewalks can lead to a $50 fine for a first offense and $100 for repeat offenders. And we are all being asked to have patience tomorrow. As the mayor announced, the secondary and tertiary roads will probably not begin to be plowed until tomorrow. Um, so if you need to be able to get to a bus or a subway route, it may take you a little bit more time. And for those who might want to ignore the advice of not driving in, it would be tough going on the city streets with these mounds of snow all along the side streets especially. Also, the alternate side ban is going to be reevaluated on Thursday, depending on how the snow removal goes. We're live on the Upper East Side. Art McFarland, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Art. Because of the holiday, getting around today for most people wasn't much of an issue, but tomorrow, getting around is going to be a necessity. Mayor Bloomberg wants the George Washington Bridge to look tomorrow like it does right now. Nobody's on it. He's urging everyone to use public transportation. Sandra Bookman here with important information you need to know for your morning commute. Sandra? Bill, I think the mayor may have had the best advice for commuters tomorrow. It may take a while, but you will get there. The difference, of course, may be how you make the trip. You may be forced to make allowances for some weather-related changes. Huffing it seemed the best way to navigate urban snow drifts tonight, but come tomorrow, most New Yorkers will face the dilemma of how to get there from wherever they are. Penn Station was an oasis of calm this evening. Only a handful of riders braved the blizzard to make the commute. I couldn't believe it was only five minutes late and it got me here. I actually got to the city uh, about an hour ahead of schedule. The reduced ridership was welcome as most area rail services also ran holiday or weekend schedules. The same will be true for some tomorrow. Metro North will offer a Sunday schedule in anticipation of fewer travelers. But the Long Island Railroad plans a regular weekday schedule, though some trains may have fewer cars. And New Jersey Transit says its trains will run on an enhanced Saturday schedule with additional trains on some lines and Midtown Direct Lines will be rerouted to Hoboken. 
And though New Jersey transit ticket windows at the Port Authority bus terminal were closed tonight, the buses are scheduled to hit their regular weekday routes Tuesday morning. Underground was the best way to travel in this winter storm. Even scattered delays and suspensions made it preferable to being above ground for some. Just walking to the train from my house through feet of feet of unplowed <laughs> sidewalks, that was difficult. It was also difficult for city buses, even tonight after the snowfall slacked off. Still, subways and buses are expected to run on their regular schedules tomorrow, though the Transit Authority warns some weather-related delays and changes are possible. Another option for eager travelers inconvenienced by today's whiteout, the New York Waterway Ferry made its final runs across the Hudson tonight, promising the boats will be back in business tomorrow on a regular schedule. The same word from the Staten Island Ferry. Now, we realize that there are numerous schedules that we weren't able to include in that initial list, but throughout this newscast, you will find some of that information at the bottom of your screen. We will have the most up-to-date details on Eyewitness News beginning at 4.30 a.m., and you can visit our website for those schedules at any time. That's 7online.com. Diana? Thank you, Sandra. At all three area airports, stranded passengers are waiting it out. Many of them will spend the night on the linoleum, hoping that they can catch a flight out sometime tomorrow. We're going to take a look at a live shot. This is from outside Newark Airport, where flights were canceled all day long. Same thing at Kennedy and LaGuardia. And LaGuardia is where Lucy Yang is right now with the latest for us from there. Lucy? Well, Diana, it was a quiet but frustrating day here at LaGuardia when Port Authority had no choice but to shut down all their runways. The weather was such they just could not plow fast enough for planes to take off or land. Okay, cheers. cheers. Granted, there wasn't much to celebrate at the airport tonight, but that didn't stop this family from toasting Olga's son, who's about to get married in Costa Rica. But it's my bambino's wedding. You've got to go. Mm -hmm. You can't miss this wedding. Mm -mm. They have been here since 3 in the morning for a 6 a.m. flight that never took off. They're just praying they get to the church on time. Until then, they've turned the ticket counter at American into Casa Orochina. Living room, dining room, sleeping area, room. everything. <laughs> Once nearby hotels filled up, the Port Authority came to the rescue for some 150 stranded passengers, handing out cots and bedding, keeping concession stands open. All the while trying to get the airport off the ground, crews began plowing last night, but when it was clear they would never get ahead of Old Man Winter, they closed the runways at 8 this morning. Safety's first. We had some horrible conditions today, some you know, winds uh, from 30 to 40 miles an hour. We, uh, last count, we had about 16 inches of snow. So it was pretty brutal out there. You'd be surprised if you looked at the runways. You'd go, wow, they look great. But remember, a half of inch of snow on a runway is unacceptable. What crews could be spared from the runways were sent to the parking lots to rescue all the buried cars. The snow going straight into the pot, melted down and dumped into the drain. For travelers long on fatigue, short on patience, there may be an end in sight. We're optimistic that we can probably open by 6 o'clock in the morning. The worst case, if the conditions uh, do get a little worse, uh, is noon. For these young tourists from South Korea, it has been a long day and night at the airport, filling the endless hours with memories of their visit to New York. Empire State Building is awesome. Yeah, and Stitch of Liberty. And what? Stitch of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. Oh, you yeah. like that too? Yeah. What do you think about the snow? Snow, um, I, uh, oh, it's <laughs> very not good. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better now. I should explain that even if the runways reopen first thing in the morning, the airlines still have to get their carriers back here to Queens before any flights can take off. So the best bet is before you come racing to the airport, call your airlines first. We're live at LaGuardia tonight. Lucy Yang, ABC7 Eyewitness News. And it's going to be quite a backup. Thank you, Lucy. Firefighters in Queens had their hands full tonight as they tackled a five-alarm fire under the worst of conditions, including frozen hydrants. The fire broke out in a factory. Marcus Solis is live in Long Island City with more for us. Marcus? And Diana, three minor injuries to firefighters as they struggled to put out this fire in a factory that made perfume and lotions. They are now wrapping up, though, seven hours after they originally got the call. Just one difficult task in what has been a difficult day for many people. Fighting heat and flames amid ice and snow. For hundreds of firefighters, the blizzard of 2003 meant trying to beat back a stubborn five-alarm fire. 
Think the weather might have made a tough job even tougher? You bet it did. One problem, frozen hydrants. You never get used to this. It's always uh, difficult. We have very cold weather, uh, a lot of snow, a lot of wind, and we've been here for a number of hours already. On Long Island, emergency crews responded to an awning collapse in Bayshore, the structure collapsing under the weight of the snow. Tonight, residents are digging out from nearly two feet of snow. But if there's one upside, it's that there haven't been the kind of power outages seen in storms past. And that's not just good luck. We've had to put a lot of money into the system because, frankly, for many years the system was in disrepair, and I think it's now showing results, and uh, that's good for our customers. At the height of the blizzard, getting around on foot or by car was difficult. Just seeing a few feet in front of your face was a challenge. On Northern Boulevard, plows were on parade as crews were able to get to primary and secondary roads. But side streets, those are going to take a while. As many began shoveling, the Sforza family's driveway was clear, thanks to some timely gift giving. We bought a snowblower on Friday. That was my Valentine's Day gift to my husband, so he didn't have to shovel. I hate it. I hate winter and I, I, I hate snow because I got to clean a lot. But there are your snow lovers. At Crocher and Park, some alternate means of transportation on display. They sure look like fun, but we're not exactly sure if these are street legal. We keep them upstate and we heard the blizzard was coming, so we ran quick upstate and got them and we've been ripping it up all over Bayside. It's the greatest. Well, now, for older residents that remember Lindsay's snowstorm back in 1969, where it took almost a week to dig out the city's largest borough of Queens, well, the good news is the plows have been going throughout the day. They've been going tonight, and as you can see, Northern Boulevard here is already down to the blacktop. And we're live in Long Island City. Marcus Solis, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Mm. Thank you, Marcus. As you heard in Marcus's report, the sheer weight of all this snow is problematic. And in New two New Jersey communities tonight, the weight took its toll. In Edison, an awning at a technical school collapsed and killed a student. And a roof caved in at a drugstore in Clifton. No one was hurt, but it was a very close call. New Jersey reporter Jen Maxfield is in Jersey City with that story tonight. Jen? And Bill, talk about a rude awakening. Underneath this snowdrift here is a Chrysler New Yorker. How do you think the owner of this car is going to feel when he or she wakes up tomorrow morning and finds their car underneath all of this snow? Just to give you a sense of perspective here, I'm five feet six inches tall. This drift is at the very least three feet tall. And take a look down this local road here. You'll see that many of the cars are in a very similar predicament. Now, this is going to create a serious obstacle for Jersey City plow trucks and dump trucks trying to get through these streets to get out all this snow tomorrow morning. One man and his shovel versus almost two feet of snow. Michael Peterson has been working for two hours just to clear a path. My car was completely covered. It was, as you can see, it was up to here. So I had to, you know, try and dig around, try and find a way. You know, it's, it's crazy out here. Snow is everywhere. Thousands of cars are trapped in snow drifts on the roadside, and if they're not out by tomorrow at 7 a.m., Jersey City workers will use a tow truck to move them. No tickets, but Jersey City's mayor says this grace period won't last long. We realize that it's difficult for everyone to, to get out there um, and, and, and do that type of work, but uh, anyone who can, certainly we had hoped that they would. Anybody who can get help, uh, to do so, they, they should try to get that assistance. The snow has tapered off now, but this morning in Bergen County, driving was a challenge. That is, if you could even get out of the driveway. The heavy snow is also blamed for two roof collapses. One at the Edison Job Corps Academy claimed the life of a 23-year-old man whose co-workers fought desperately to save. While they were on their way, the students and my security and maintenance staff were trying to dig the kids out. Um, unfortunately, you know, we just weren't fast enough. And in Clifton, the roof of a Rite Aid drugstore caved in just seconds after employees sprinted out the front door when they felt the walls shake. I feel at... very, very, very lucky. I was within two seconds, two seconds of that falling down. No one was hurt in that collapse, but police warned homeowners not to try to clear snow from their roofs because the risk of falling is much greater than the risk of a structural collapse. 
and a lot of people are wondering about the morning commute tomorrow. Now, most of the major highways are clear, but as for the local roads, well, take a look. There's still an awful lot of snow on them. Many schools and businesses are closed tomorrow. Now, if you are going to work in one of New Jersey's major cities, Jersey City, Newark, Hoboken, you're being asked to take mass transit because there will be very few, if any, parking spots. Reporting live from Jersey City, I'm Jen Maxfield, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Good suggestion for everyone. Thank you, Jen. Now to the school closings, as Jen mentioned, for tomorrow. New York City public schools and some suburban schools are shut all week for winter break. But for all those students who remain in session, well, this storm will give them another day off. All Catholic schools in Manhattan, the Bronx, Staten Island, they're all closed tomorrow. Classes at Long Island University's Brooklyn campus also canceled. Classes at St. John's University and Pace University canceled for tomorrow. Now, for a complete list of school closings and delays in our area, you can check our website, 7online.com, or tune in to Eyewitness News beginning tomorrow morning at 4.30. We'll also have all the transportation information you need to get back to work. And when we come back, a deadly accident in the Bronx is blamed on this storm. We'll have that story for you. Plus, how the steep hills in Brooklyn are proving to be a serious challenge for workers trying to clear the snow. We'll take you there when we come back in 60 seconds.